Joining us live on the broadcast is uh, Professor James Brown, Associate Professor of Political Science at Temple University. For more on that, uh, Dr. Brown, uh, considering the fact that the Prime Minister has majority in the Parliament, we do expect the budget to be passed. Oh, absolutely. There is no real question about that at all, that uh, this budget is going to be passed and it's going to be a continuation of a trend we've seen over many years in Japan now. This is the, the ninth consecutive year in which there's been an increase in the defence budget. And it really is an indication of the difficult neighbourhood and the many security challenges that Japan is facing. Tell us more about the messaging and the, the stern uh, message that really goes out to China when this is the ninth consecutive rise on part of Japan as far as its military spending is concerned. Yeah, very much so. It's uh, a message of the extent to which Japan is, is worried, not just about China, but also North Korea and to a lesser extent, uh, Russia to the north as well. But I think we have to put this in perspective as well. This is, as I mentioned, the ninth consecutive year. Uh, it does make Japan more capable. But at the same time, we have to recognize that Japan still remains quite a modest spender when it comes to defense. It spends around 1% of GDP on defense, even with this record uh, budget. And you compare that with, say, the United States, 3.4%, Russia, more like 4%. Uh, so only 1% is really quite a, a modest amount, given the extent of threats that Japan faces. From China, North Korea, and its northern neighbor, Russia, as well. The planned fighter jet, uh, which will be a first in three decades, expected to cost around $40 billion. Uh, tell us more about this purchase, and it is going to be uh, ready in the 2030s, we believe. Well, the, the timing of it is going to be the very interesting thing. So, uh, yes, this would be a jet which would give the uh, air self-defense forces uh, increased uh, capabilities and especially uh, keeping in mind that uh, China and Russia very frequently approach Japanese airspace. So Japan wants to have the capabilities to respond to that. But the timing is a concern because uh, with defense projects like this, um, for Japan, for other countries as well, there is, of course, uh, a risk of them going significantly over budget and over uh, time as well. So we'll have to watch and see actually when these new jets are delivered. Professor Brown, appreciate very much for joining us on the broadcast with those perspectives. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.